What's up guys, Justin here from SketchupEssentials.com. So as you can see, I don't have my normal background because the power is out at my house right now. I still have battery power on my laptop, so let's go ahead and make a tutorial. And so in today's video, what I'm going to talk about is just using the Move tool to create abnormal roofs by moving vertices in SketchUp. If you're looking for more great SketchUp tips, make sure you check those out at SketchupEssentials.com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, well, since I don't have internet access, I can't really make the tutorial that I was going to make today. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a tutorial where we talk about how to use the Move tool in order to move vertices inside of SketchUp. And so what we're gonna do is talk about the ability to move a single point, because I think a lot of people don't know that you can even do that in SketchUp. And so in order to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we don't have anything selected in our model. So no edges, no vertices, no faces, anything like that. And then we're just gonna activate the move tool by tapping the M key. You can see how when I um, activate the move tool and move it over all of these different faces it and objects, it kind of highlights them as it goes over it. Well, one thing you're going to notice is it doesn't really highlight anything when you click on a corner. However, when I single click on this corner, you can see how I can actually move this vertice straight up and down. And because of the way the geometry auto folds inside of SketchUp, this is gonna allow me to move this straight up and down. And it's gonna auto fold this face. And one thing to note about this when you first click on that vertex is you're probably gonna have to tap either the up arrow key to lock it to the blue axis or the alt key in order to turn on auto fold mode. And so what that means is you can use this to create some interesting roof type shapes. Like for example, let's say that we were to push pull this face up and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset this out and then I'm actually gonna put it in a group. So I'm just gonna double click in here or actually I'm gonna click on this face and I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna click on this face. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click make group because what I wanna do in this case is I wanna create a roof. I wanna create a roof that hangs out over the edge of this object. And so now if I double click inside that group, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase the edges in here that are inside that line or inside that object so that this is a single face. And so then I'm gonna make sure I don't have anything selected in here. And one trick to do that, by the way, is if you go up to uh, if you go up to your keyboard shortcuts, you can see that Control T will actually allow you to deselect everything. So if you hit Control T, that'll make sure that nothing is selected. But then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna click on this corner. And you can see I'm having some trouble getting this corner to go up. Well, what you wanna do when you do this is you wanna top or you want to tap either the Alt key. You can see how when I tap the Alt key, this actually toggles auto fold, meaning this face gets toggled, or you want to tap the up arrow key to lock this to the blue axis. You can see how when I do that, that's going to allow me to create this kind of a interesting roof shape that's taller on one side than on the other side. And then now what you might do is there's a few different ways that you could do this, but you're really going to need to kind of fill this in um, because you're going to have a gap between your lower face and your upper face in here. And so I'm going to show you two ways to do that. One way is going to be manually and one way is going to be using an extension. So manually, if you were to do this, all you would do is you would just draw a line up here until it intersects with this face and a line up here along the blue axis and then you just fill that face in. And so in this case that got a little bit weird just because this corner is after or this corner is to the right of this edge right here. So probably what you would do is you would draw a line across here and then erase out your extra and then you would do the same thing over here and fill this in. And then finally, you do the same thing on this side. And you can see how that gives you kind of an ugly split along this face. Oops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna erase out these lines after we draw them in here so that this is a smooth face. And then on the top of this, um, you can see how you've got a series of edges showing up on the top of this roof. Um, and you don't necessarily want those showing through. So all we're going to do 
is we're just going to use the erase tool and we're going to hold the shift key and what that's going to allow us to do is erase the or hide these edges so that you can't see them anymore so you can see how now this gives you a pretty smooth face in here and it is showing you this a little bit um, one thing you might want to consider is maybe using an extension like joint push pull to give this a little bit of thickness or something like that but overall you can see how we were able to create that roof shape fairly easily so the other way you could do this is you could use the extension extrusion tools by TIG and I will link to more information about that particular tool. Um, but basically the way that one works is it has a bunch of tools in here for extruding different objects. Well, there's a tool in here called Extrude Edges by Vector to Object, which sounds complicated, but really what it means is it'll take a series of edges like these and it'll extrude them until they intersect with something. So what I could do is I could come in here and I could select these four edges. Then I could use Extrude Edges by Vector to Object and I could just move my mouse up along this blue axis and click. It's going to ask if I want to reverse the faces. I'm going to say yes. It's going to ask if I want to explode the group and I'm going to say yes. And you can see how that extruded these edges upward nicely until they intersected with this face. And then I could just come in here and I could just hold the shift key and click and drag across them with the eraser in order to hide them. So you can see how that's an easy way to use autofold to create this roof. So and then the other thing you might try is you might also think about using the extension joint push pull to give your roof some thickness. So if I was to push pull this or uh, use auto fold um, to push pull this up and create a roof, you can see how the actual push pull tool isn't going to work very well um, because you could push pull these two edges, but there's kind of this ugly gap in here. Well, joint push pull is an extension from Fredo 6 designed to let you push pull multiple different faces at once. And so what that one will do is if you select these two edges and then activate joint push pull, you can push pull this up to give it thickness really easily. And one thing you're going to want to toggle when you do this is the option for thicken so that your bottom plane stays put. But you could use this to give thickness to this really quickly. Then you could come in here and just do the same thing with uh, extrude tools, extrude by vector to object, reverse faces, explode group, and now you've got a roof in here with thickness that intersects with this face really nicely. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Obviously power is still out at my house, but I will get this uploaded as soon as I can. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know you could use auto fold or the move tool to select individual vertices? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.